Hi, today I'm going to be crocheting a market bag out of plastic bags. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am back with a plarn. Today I'm going to be making a market bag. This is a request from my sister, so I'm going to be giving it to her at the end. I made sure to make a really big ball this time. I'm probably still going to run out, so... We'll see, but I have a couple spare garbage bags ready to go. While I'm making this, I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you asked me on the community tab. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, hello to the one person who dislikes all my videos, turn on the notifications, make sure you go to my website and sign up for the emailing list because I'm trying to build it up right now so I can send out like weekly newsletters. I already pre-made some of the rows and I'll put the link of the pattern I'm using down below. I'm changing it up a little bit, but it's basically the same. So this is what it looks like so far and I'm just building. Alyssa asks, any tips for people wanting to grow their handmade business? At this point of my business, I'm also still like really learning how to grow it. But I would say like if you don't have a social media presence, I think that definitely something you should get. Make sure you grow your following and make sure that you have good pictures of your products. Especially if it's like on a saturated platform like Etsy where everything is handmade. If you have really good pictures, it'll help you stand out from... The other sellers videos help a lot i guess i just make videos on youtube so i'm gonna start linking them on my website as well crochet girl asked do you think you could do a yarn haul oh like a yarn shop with me next time you go buy your yarn yeah that would be a fun video actually how long have you been crocheting for i've been crocheting since last may so it hasn't even been a year yet i feel like i've been crocheting my whole life since i crochet basically every day for like at least two hours what plans do you have for your business in the future and by the way, I love you so much and aspire to be like you. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your question. I'm hoping to come out with merch. <laughs> that's something I'm really excited for. Definitely like in the future, I don't think I'll be doing it now, but that would be really fun to come up with like crochet sayings and have like cute sweatshirts and stuff. And then we could all wear it together and crochet together. That'd be so much fun. I guess just like selling more patterns, coming out with courses on like sweaters and uh, the dolls that I make and I know you guys really like the bucket hats so coming out with more tutorial variations of bucket hats you can do. The next question is from Alexi. What was it like starting a crochet business? How do you manage custom receiving designs and accepting payments? Oh, for custom orders on my website, I have like an option and then I'll ask them like through email or something what they're looking for and then Based on that, I'll tell them like which like price to buy, if that makes sense. They like have a consultation with me before they buy anything. And then after they purchase, I'll start making it. All the jazz gameplay, I don't know how you pronounce it, asked, where did you learn to crochet? So I literally just started crocheting from watching YouTube videos. I started by making amigurumis, which I know is not like the easiest way to start crocheting, but that's the reason why I kind of want to start. Trying to manage like a more difficult technique really helped me in the long run because everything else was pretty easy compared to that. Gracie Nandy asks, what's one advice you would give to budding crochet business owners? Oh no, let me read that again. <laughs> What's one advice you would give to budding crochet business owners? How to commercialize, by the way, I love you lots from India. Thank you for watching my video, that's so cool. Well, this is kind of similar to the first question I answered, but definitely have a social media presence, uh, tell all your friends and family, get the word out there that you actually sell crochet items because maybe there's someone out there that really wants to buy what you're selling, but just doesn't know you're selling it. So I think it's all about sharing what you're making, having a support system because it can get stressful at times especially if you do start getting a lot of orders Michaela, I think that's how you pronounce it ask what is your favorite pattern why is it your favorite favorite brand of yarn what was your biggest project I don't have a mm, I guess my bucket hat <laughs> it's fun to make since I've made them so many times it's more like a mindless kind of thing I could just make it while doing anything I don't have to constantly look at the pattern so it's fully ingrained in my brain at this point favorite brand of yarn since I do a lot of amigurumi dolls and bucket hats I like using lily sugar and cream because that's 100% cotton yarn and it's very durable I also really like red hard soft yarn for sweaters and anything what was your biggest project so I would say I, I made a blanket before I'll put a picture up now I made it for my dad's birthday and so basically, I made this in like two days. It was 
I was crocheting like all day for these two days and then it looked pretty plain so I knew I wanted to do a little textile design on top so then I just crocheted in a design it's something more artistic I guess it's not something I could really recreate I wish I filmed the process of it, but I just remember being so stressed, like I just wanted to finish it. I think I made it like on the day of his birthday or like the day before his birthday. <laughs> Kitsten Wilson, why did you start crocheting? So I actually wanted to make this stuffy for a friend and I was like, what's the best way? Cause I didn't want to buy, I want to make it. And so I was looking at maybe sewing. Cause at one point I really liked making little plushies with felt. And I was like, oh, that might look not that good because I'm not the best at sewing. And then I came across amigurumi dolls and I was like, oh, I think I could do that. Because I remember when I was younger, I tried to learn how to crochet, but I failed so badly at it. And I just remember feeling so defeated because I loved trying new arts and crafts. And that was like the only one that I couldn't figure out how to do. But years later and now i can do it and i even opened a business surrounding it so that's fun i started for the friend and i just kept crocheting after that caliana Ware asks what are your next crochet projects gonna be so well this is one of them um market bag and then a bunch of different bucket hats and definitely need to get to a sweater vest i've been planning a sweater vest for so long but it's just it hasn't gotten done yet I just have this humongous to-do list and since crocheting takes so long I can never get to all of it but I also want to redo those shorts I made if you haven't watched that video yet you can watch it in the cards that was definitely a learning experience I didn't I, I thought it would turn out really well but I definitely want to make it to something I can wear. Crossing AJ asks, who are your favorite crocheting channels? So honestly, I don't really watch, like I've tried searching for some, but there's not a lot out there I think that like post consistently and stuff. Usually while I'm crocheting, I'm either like filming a video <laughs> or um, I'm watching like Netflix or something. Elizabeth Rose asks, do you have any advice on starting a YouTube channel? So I actually just watched Alicia Marie's video on like how to grow on YouTube and stuff and her tips were really good So make sure to check out her video. I started this YouTube channel back when I was in grade 7 so 2015 2016 I think and Back then I kind of just made like random skits because I really liked Because I really liked making short films with my friends and that's why I'm in film school now It didn't really get any views at all and but I still did it because I just really liked making videos and it wasn't until I posted my Shipping my first order video did my channel actually start like picking up I guess and Even when I first posted it, I got no views, but I kind of expected it I just I was just doing it for fun and then one day I saw I was like, whoa, what? It has 200 and then 300, 400, 500, and now it's almost at 10,000. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then so I was like, oh, maybe people actually are interested in like the process of starting a small business or like crocheting even. So once I started gaining an audience, I started seeing what videos. In one of my videos, I mentioned the 80-20 principle and I could definitely see that in what videos were successful. Only like 20% of my videos actually get a lot of views. Just start posting because you want to post, not really for any like gain or money or anything. And from there, if you start getting views and stuff, see what your audience likes watching and then make more of that. Rosie Heaney asks, favorite thing you ever crocheted and why? I really liked the unicorn that I crocheted. I think it's super cute. I did sell them, so I don't have any right now, but I'm just trying to find yarn that is like really big and stuff so I can make a humongous unicorn. Oh, I am I can already like picture in my head. So if you have any suggestions on like what yarn to use, if you wanna make a really big amigurumi doll, let me know in the comments. How much do you spend for a startup budget in crochet business? Oh, I inspired you to open your own small business. Oh, I'm glad. So startup 
budget honestly you don't need that much i think the yarn packaging if you're gonna ship them out i personally paid for a website so that's definitely gonna <laughs> make your cost go way up i would suggest starting smaller like on depop or etsy if you don't have that much of a budget to start with. I can't really give you like an exact number, but I would say like save up around like one to $200. And then once you start making profit, you can start growing your business and then have like other perks, like maybe customizable packaging and that kind of stuff. It's not that expensive unless you pay for like advertising and all that, but you can get all that for free just through social media. Caitlin, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, sorry. Um, how are you today? Oh, so sweet. Honestly, I was pretty busy today. I did have a nice walk with my parents at like around nine, so that's been busy, but it's been a good day. Uh, what size hook do you use for most of your projects? I have mentioned this multiple times on my channel, but this is my favorite crochet hook type it's the clover soft touch and i have it in 3.5 4.5 and 6 millimeters so that is definitely what i lean towards but if i do need like a more specific size hook i'll just use like a susan bates hook or something i i feel like i'm just not very good at making tutorials <laughs> i need a better setup so I'm not like crouched over all the time, but yeah, I'll definitely make a lot more tutorials in the future. Zoe Gill asks, what are your tips for finishing a project when you lose motivation to finish it? Also, what is your favorite project that you have made? I guess I do have a lot of like work in progress things that I never really finish, but eventually I get around to it. So I wouldn't say force yourself to finish it, but definitely just make a work in progress bin or something that you can just kind of throw it in there and then if you don't have anything to crochet for one day, you can look into it. I feel like when you start forcing yourself to crochet certain things, you start to lose your love for crochet and you don't really want to crochet anymore. I think that's the same for anything you do in life. At one point, if you have to force yourself to do it, it's just all enjoyment is lost. The real cape player <laughs> asks, um, does your neck or hands ever hurt while crocheting? And if you have any recommendations to help out or any stretches? Oh, definitely. When I first started crocheting, like my thumb was always like, it felt like there was a bruise because I would press on the crochet hook so hard because I was like trying to like jam the crochet hook into the, the loops. But I would say if you want to try it with me, stretch out your arms like this and then make your fingers as wide as you can, like stretch them out as much as you can and then squeeze them as hard as you can and then explode them again. And then just do this like 10 times and make sure each time you're putting maximum effort and like stretching out your fingers. And that'll help like a lot of blood flow go to your fingers and make them more mobile, I guess, and not as stiff. Oh, also for the neck thing, yeah. In one of my videos, a uh, viewer, suggested that I actually like have a large pillow in front of me so I just like I can hold the crochet up more and prop my elbows up and so that's why I always do these talks with this little bear my friend got me <laughs> um so thank you that's a really good tip so just have like a large pillow in front of your <laughs> So just have a large pillow on your lap so you can rest your elbows on it. And this is the last question. Okay, Natalia Borrero. Sorry, I can't pronounce like anybody's names today. <laughs> How to manage school and your store and YouTube at the same time. I made a more elaborate video on this topic how to balance everything it's called crochet with me while i tell you the balance how to balance your life the secret to balancing your life i'll put it in the card here um but yeah i kind of just talk about how i do that but i guess a shorter answer is to schedule everything and just have a priority so for having a schedule for youtube has actually really helped me because now i know i have to post on tuesday and saturday and we'll always try to get a video ready by then. And for schoolwork, make sure you write all your homework down and what you need to study and everything. So just like writing things down and having a to-do list, like that's definitely will help you and get rid of a lot of stress. As I predicted, I did not finish this market bag, but I will. I didn't get anything done. I feel like this looks like the same as I when I st first started this video. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope my answers were helpful. I will elaborate on some of these answers in other videos, but make sure you subscribe if you have watched this far. Thank you so much for watching through the video. It really helps my channel out and also give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video.
拜。